Hello. My frame rate is so bad. I'm gonna try closing some stuff. Uh, my potato notebook can take this. Streaming and uh, having the game open at the same time is just too much. Oh, hey, we have a follower. Oh, uh, the tsunami one was that it? Thanks for following and uh, welcome to the stream. Hello, Sefer, how are you? Look at yeah. Hmm. I didn't even notice your typo. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be showing some super early stuff right now. Fine as always, excited for the stream, how are you? Oh, good. I'm good. I made some progress today. Um been thinking a lot about the game. I'm not sure about some of the systems, but um Oh this was close of it. But uh I'm hopeful I guess because I mean, the thing is, uh, this is also a close one, wow, a uh, green one, just barely. Uh, the thing some, some people don't realize, I guess, is, um, wow, are all the events going to be so close? What the hell? This didn't come up on, when I was testing before. And green one is again. Okay, this is like this was not as close. Red, green, di different parties. Basically, this is just how every event's gonna work. But anyway, what I what I was trying to say was how I'm trying to do something new here. Like oh oh, the green caught up right. Right in time. Um, I'm creating a new system, a new gameplay mechanic, and um, it's not easy. We have a, basically a tie, and here red's gonna win for sure. So this, this was literally a tie. So, when you're, when you're creating a new system, it's hard to tell if it's going to work or not. But right now, I just... Oh, nope. Denied. Oh, no. I'm going to pause this because I get too entertained. Um, yeah, when you're creating a... A new system, you can tell if it's gonna work or not. I just, you know, I have a, an intuition that the system is gonna work. I play tested it on Google spreadsheets, which might not be much, but that's what I have. And uh, 
The prototyping is how I can usually tell if a system is promising or not. Um, and I think this one is. But uh, yeah, it's it's hard to know for sure, and it's even harder to prove it, I guess. But here I'm gonna show how you how how it's working on the simulation at least. So basically, uh, this is the this is Historia Realis, the prototype. On the background, you have the map, which is just a background image; it doesn't work at all. And here in the foreground, you have the timeline, which is this line in the center. Uh, you have the present, which is here in the middle. And the events are coming from the future into the present. So this event here, it has just been created. So um, characters can now join this event. And they're going to either join on the green side or the red side and uh, characters can join while this event starting but only when the event gets past this little line here characters are gonna start making contributions to this event and uh, whoever makes the most contribution wins the event that's basically how it's gonna work. Uh, sometimes it's just one character, but here we have two sides. And uh, green is slowly making progress towards winning the event. Uh, don't mind that they're rotating a bit. It's just oh, it's testing something. It's just it's not final. None of this is final, really. But yeah, uh, so basically characters are making their contributions with their stats and they're just adding it, that up to the event. And here for example, green is going to win, no, no last minute miracles here. So here what this would mean in the game would be that the event has failed. Uh, red means failing the event, stopping the event from happening, and green means making the event happen. So if this was a debate, uh, I'm not sure what... I, I guess it can be a few things. If it is a debate, then it's a debate between two sides. Right now all of the events are debates, so this one's going to say debate as well just because I haven't really updated that that uh, string but um, yeah it's mo uh, a lot of the time for assassinations for example it's gonna be green uh, if green wins the assassination takes place if red wins no assassination takes place and um, um, that's basically it I I don't know how to explain this better. But you know, there's no player actions right now in this uh, simulation, it's just the uh, simulation, just the AI characters doing their thing. So here for example, some AI character has started failing the event, which makes no sense. I'm gonna have to fix that. I've, I've seen this before, I just haven't going through the trouble of making sure that all characters start on the green side they're starting randomly uh, someone joined on the other side kind of late but there's a like, like a catch-up thing not uh not catch-up as in the tomato sauce but as in uh catching up and uh the side that's behind gets like a 20% bonus to their contributions. So if you're too weak, then the catching up doesn't help, but in this case it does help. And also something that I did uh, based on Discord 
uh, feedback was that it, while the event is in this stage, you know, the event is just starting out, uh, the contributions are normal, but here when the event is about to hit uh, its ending, hit the present, when you know the assassination takes place or not, uh, in this area the contributions made are worth uh, two times more. So on both sides they're gonna be adding two times the effort they would normally be adding. And what's, uh, what ends up happening is that uh, most of the contribution is made in uh, this stage and here you have like about 40% of the contributions made here so even if you get on the event late you can still win and the, there can be comebacks I think green is too weak to make a comeback here uh, they need a, a little bit more time I think it's just not gonna be quite enough oh yeah that, that didn't work and yeah, you can see the events. So this event has ended and it's just there so you can see which events have already happened. You can, you're going to be able to click that and get uh, details on that, who won, and stuff like that. And, um, oh, this was a close one, strangely, because it was just one person for a long time here. And here as well, someone joined last minute. Um, I don't know, I, th I think this probably looks like way too unfinished. You need to use a bit of imagination to see the systems behind this. But uh, I have, uh, have quite some confidence that this is going to work like this. This is going to be an interesting gameplay mechanic. Even just watching the events right now, I find, it, I find them interesting to watch. And cheer for it, for its side. I'm. I spent quite a quite a while just uh, seeing which side won, even though uh, basically there's there's nothing saying what you get for winning, but you're basically gonna get stats, improve stats, improve your prestige or octoritas, and then you're gonna use that to win better events and win offices like uh, console and stuff like that. Alex says looks good so far and uh, Upvex says uh, thanks Alex. Upvex says hey man you have to start showcasing what it is at some point. Yeah I guess so. So here it is. Um, do you have any questions? Can I... Is there something you guys want me to talk about? Because this is basically it, it's like conceptualizing the system has taken quite a bit of time and implementing it has also taken a lot of time and it's just barely implemented. But if I think it's a nice base and Red's not gonna make it in time. I think time is a very strong variable in the system and I'm not sure if it's too strong because the thing is if you get on an event early you have a huge advantage and maybe that makes sense like if you've been like let's say it's um, uh, oh wow um, let's say it's a uh, political campaign for elections and stuff um if you if you do that for a long time and your opponent only does it at the very end it makes sense that that the guide head that has been putting a lot of efforts into it for a long time is going to have an advantage and that the guy who got in at the end he might turn things around but he's, he's going to be at a disadvantage and it's going to let a lot of uh, quality to turn things around so yeah, time is, time ends up being very powerful, but I think it should be. Like I, I was thinking, oh maybe, uh, maybe events can be created 
here and um, when they get here they are decided and there are no contributions made throughout time it's just just a way to show which events are available and uh, and there's there's no contributions through time as it is right now like he he's putting in like there's 15 every day so it goes 45 uh, 60 or whatever um, and I thought about just doing this only at the very end but then I, I don't know it doesn't make so much sense to resolve everything at the end I think it would, it would be weird and the, uh, the winning strategy for the player would be to just wait for events to get at the very end and then join that event if you can win that event and right as it ends you can join this one and win that that one as well and that doesn't make any sense if you join at the end like you're late to the party uh, so you might get something but you probably won't maybe you'll be able to turn the event around but even if you turn that around you made a small contribution so yeah Sefer says it yes, makes sense that uh, keeping your events a secret you're going to have the most power control over it oh wait I, I didn't even consider secret events but yeah that's true as well Charlie Main says I don't know if you talked about this but what happens if the leader of the event dies then the leader becomes the whoever contributed most to the side like I haven't added that that UI yet but for example this 419 is probably like 200 from one character and uh, 219 from another character so if the character who contributed 219 to the event dies then his contribution stays but uh, the leader becomes the guy with 200 yeah Alex says uh, let me pause this for a second have you thought about having critical failures for example if green gets under 50% of red score then something bad happens yeah like the assassination plot fails and the plot is revealed yes I thought about it I think it's a better system than uh, what paradox does with the assassinations which is just uh, random pretty much and it's like I mean I guess it depends on plot power a bit but it's, it's a lot like yeah sometimes you're revealed sometimes you're not revealed and it, it would be nice to like have well like you have the middle marker which defines the winner so you know red is winning because he passed the middle marker there could be a marker like around here where he is which is like a uh, I don't know a crushing victory something like that and then you maybe turn it around or you get it an even bigger win the problem with that though is that it just makes the strong stronger um, I think and it, it's not even I don't know if that reward is really the best because the coolest events even just by watching this the coolest events are the ones that are close when you just barely win I, I somehow feel that you should get a bigger reward for barely winning than for uh, winning it by crushing it I don't know if that makes sense but barely winning is like more uh, more intense when that happens I get constantly revealed with over 3000 plot power yeah that's RNG for you I don't I don't much like RNG I mean I understand there's gonna be a lot of RNGs in history of realis but it's the kind of RNG that the player can react to what I don't like is like uh, outcome RNG when it's like okay I have everything ready I've set up my strategy now I'm gonna flip a coin 
and it's I win if it's heads and I, I lose if it's tails. I don't like that kind of RNG. The kind of RNG I like is when um, you flip the coin first. Okay, I'm gonna flip a coin if, and if it's heads then uh, uh, this is the situation, if it's tails then this is the situation and then the player gets to react to that. I think that's the good kind of RNG because then it's not just luck, it's it's a way to make interesting situations and varied situations for the player to do with but it's not just uh, okay flip a coin to decide if you if you win or lose it's more like you flip the coin to to decide what's going on and then the player with a strategy can try to win or lose maybe I hope I made myself clear so yeah the 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 events are not gonna be random like how annoying would it be for you to for example be red here and you're like you're crushing this event I mean a green is trying to come back a little bit but imagine that uh, this was a percent chance to win so you have like some 75 percent chance to win this event and your opponent has this 25 percent chance to win and you I mean you absolutely crushed this event imagine if this was a, a percent chance and then green won it would be so unfair and this is like even in a and I don't know if it was even more like if, if you had a, like 95 percent and uh, green won it doesn't make sense so yeah that's not gonna happen for sure but yeah anyway I just I've, I've been enjoying watching this sometimes uh, this strong gets stronger like here sometimes there's people alone in their events because no one nobody else has joined and sometimes it's closer sometimes there's a comeback Ooh. sometimes not No, no comeback there. Hello, Tapioca. Yeah, anyway. Uh, are there any more questions about it? I've, I think I've said all I wanted to say about this. So let me know if you have any anything else you want to know. There's just no time, right? It's too late. I mean, I guess what you can do, maybe you get near the end just to reduce your opponent's rewards. I'm not sure if winning alone should be better than winning uh, crushingly, like here. Should a green get a bigger bonus for beating someone? Or should they get a bit bigger bonus for being alone in the event? Because sometimes being alone in the event is just, uh, it's, it's just a matter of luck. It's just because the AI decided not to join that event. So I'm not sure about that. Anyway, Alex says what you say is interesting. I suppose it makes sense to encourage people to use the smallest amount of influence you can to change the largest amount of events. If you join one which is crushing victory, already you're not accomplishing much yes that's true if you change a few from 49 to 51 you change history a lot yeah yeah that's what i had in mind uh, but i don't know how that can work like mathematically can we add make a comeback here on this one uh probably not Nope. Yeah. So this uh obviously this stuff is gonna be replaced like the they're not gonna be ugly green and uh, red boxes. 
and also this is gonna have a lot more detail this is just the basic information uh, there's gonna be the list of characters uh, which stats are being used in the event which side the event is going how much contribution is being made on each side and all that information that is important for the player to decide which side he wants to join yeah okay so this is all let's do like small and If you have any more questions, please let me know and I'll answer them. Or like suggestions for the system or, for, uh, or whatever you, you want. Just type it in the chat and I'll read it. So last time we were here, uh, we were reading about to the uh, ugly noses in Latin. Eke Julius ad villam advenit. So Eke was like see now or here it is, right? It was this really strange word. Yeah, here, see, look. Behold, uh, Julius, uh, which is just the guy's name, Julius, ad villam venit, ad venit. I, I know venit, but not ad venit. I guess this is just coming to. But if there's an ad here, why do you need another ad here? Ad villam ad venit. I guess just mean, means arriving at the, at the villa, which is his house. Let's try, just look for Advenit. There's something in chat, I'm gonna check that in, in a second. To come to Trich, yeah, he just arrived at his house, so. One question I have is what prevents people joining events late in order to snipe rewards? Because the reward is, um, uh, is based on how much you contributed to it, so you might win the event if you come in late, like you can change the tides, but your reward is uh, proportional to how much effort you put into it. So if you contributed like 20 in an event that was at a thousand, you contributed uh, uh, how much is that percent? I don't know, a little percent, and you get a little progress in your stats and you get a little Auctoritas prestige so sure you win the event but you get just a little bit so I could wait until one day before each event finishes and then join the side that has already won so I can share every success yeah so yeah you do share the success of winning the event but you get the reward proportional to the time spent on the event and not just the time spent, but also the effort to put into it. So that's basically the that's basically how it works. Uh, does that make sense? Sefer says I I didn't get to draw the map yet. I was talking about on Monday, but I was thinking it was a campaign system, which means that the whole country at the same time, like a campaign for Northern Gaul. Sure, that's what I was thinking as well. I also was thinking that these events would have influence on the elections. Yes, I agree. Uh, I think... I mean, the basic way that uh, military campaigns are going to have influence on the elections is that... Uh, well, they give you a prestige if you win a military victory. Um, so that's... In, and then you use that prestige to, to win elections. So that's the basic way, or you can like get money from these military campaigns for fighting in wars. You know, you, you get slaves, sell slaves, make money. So that's the thing. 
and uh, there's also I think there should be more ways like if there's a military campaign going on then that should be a concern during elections like you should get uh, your martial martial stat should matter more if it's peacetime then maybe your oratory matters more but if it's wartime then people are gonna elect a consul and a praetor or a bunch of praetors that have uh, military skill right that's what happened in history that's how marius got elected consul like five times in a row and so that's what should be in the game so people with high martial are gonna be elected more during wartime um let's listen to some age of mythology soundtrack I think I spoke too loudly today because of my voice is running out, let's say. I was thinking about a national effect, kind of like the status of China in CK2. I haven't played a China DLC. I don't know how that works. Can you, can you explain to me how that works, Suffer? Servi lecticum ante ostium ponunt. So the servants, the, the slaves, put the litter in front of uh, the door. Pater filius salutat. Uh, the father salutes the children. Salvete fidi. Well, hello, children. It a filis salutator, and the children uh, salute. Salve pater. Hi, dad. Is this age of mythology? What is the song? Okay, now it sounds more like a Jeff Mythology. It's a weird song. Anyway. Iulius ambulat ad ostium, quod ab ostiario aperitur. So Julius walks to the door. Quod. What is quod again? Okay. Quod ab ustiario aperitur, which opens the door. What? Anyway, suffer. Basically, China has uh, different stages. I think there are only Golden Age, where most bonuses from China, Silk Road, and favors you can call in for a tribute are doubled. Closed means you can't interact, and civil war, which means the Silk Road doesn't give that much money. Okay, what I was thinking is that during a campaign for a region, it would have different effects on the nation, based on how well the campaign is running. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, what I what I 
came up with for that is that um hmm. yeah but that's that's like effects on ROM you mean right so not a, not just on events I think I think you can have a, an effect on the events in general I haven't decided what are gonna be the effects on ROM because I don't even know what's gonna be the stats of ROM but Roman's gonna have like some stats for sure, like loss. Uh, Suffer so says, and as the nation, I mean effects on election and maybe even like different traits of yours. Okay. I think it's a good idea. I'm gonna have to see exactly how it's gonna be implemented. But I agree that if there's a war going on, then it should matter, right? It should influence other stuff. I think some of the events, at least, they're gonna be influenced. Like elections, like, you know, electing uh, high martial characters. Uh, maybe... I mean, what else? What else could it be? Because the, the Romans would be looking for uh, strong generals, they would be scared, so maybe they would be doing sacrifices to the gods, so piety could be useful in some events. You know, some, some events could be unlocked, like uh, human sacrifice. I think the Romans did some uh, human sacrifices pretty late into their history at desperate times, so if you're, if you're losing a war too badly, then uh, you get to do a human sacrifice, like that event opens up, and that can help the war in return by increasing the morale of troops. It could be too much for version 1.0, but I think it would be a great addition in later patches. Yeah, yeah, it sounds nice. I'd really like the system to be. Um, connected, interconnected, for the events to interact with each other. So, and that would be a great way, like war interacting with elections, for example. That's a very good um, representation of history, I think. That's how it was. So. Which... Ostia, uh, you also... this is the door. This is to open. But I, I, I'm not... I don't... Maybe code can be who, but I'm not sure why... He, who is opening the door here? I know the door is being opened. Anyway. Dominus per ostium in villam intrat. So the master, through the door, enters the villa. Post eum veniunt Cyrus et Leander. After him come or arrive Cyrus and Leander, qui duo sacos portant, who carry two bags. Ostiarius post eus ostium claudit. The door closes after them. Ursus et Davus cum lectica vacua discedunt. Urs, Ursus and Davus with uh, the litter empty. Discedunt, I forgot what this is. I think this got Smith's the answer faster. To go apart, to divide, to separate, to scatter. So are they scattering from the empty litter or are they scattering from each other? I don't know. 
but uh, this is where to stop for now. We're switching fast between stuff. I'm gonna do some Life of Cicero. Alex says interlocking systems sound like a really good idea. Yep. Wars could have other effects too. For example, successful war leaders could get uh, big boosts to their fame. Yep, exactly. Uh, especially through triumphs, which is uh, like a very the the Roman general who won a war would get a triumph, which was this huge celebration in Rome of their victory, and that made them really famous. Anyway. Alex continues with uh, which helps them in politics, like Marius or Caesar. Yep, so yeah, they both triumphed. Uh, Caesar gave up on a triumph, but that's a complicated story. Also, after wars are over, there could be more slaves and more unemployed soldiers, which could influence the economy. Wage goes down, people are unemployed. There's not going to be much economy simulation. I can uh, I can anticipate that. Like, there's just no sp no uh, no space for it. It's just too much stuff. But uh, I think the I think it might be represented through events, and the events affect political stuff. The focus is politics for sure. But I like the idea of uh, of the wars affecting stuff. Um, but I'm not sure about pops, for example, like slave pops and uh, soldier pops, uh, populations like how Paradox calls them pops. I think it would be nice to have pops and it's like everyone loves them I mean paradox players like the pop system of Victoria but um, I'm not sure myself because I don't know how they would fit with the political system of Historia Realis uh, so it's, it's gonna be even if if pops make it into the game, they're gonna make it into the game very late, I think. I would... I'd be really happy to add them, but uh, it's a big challenge, I think. So for says also the generals, I don't know if you can play them or get to the leading general in the campaign. Yeah, you got to be the leading general in the campaign if you make enough uh, or a contribution, if you're the top character any contribution, then you become the leader of the campaign. Should be able to increase war efforts by spending their own money. I agree. I think this this is, should be the case for every event. In every event you should increase effort by spending money. Plus get money from friends for favors. In rare cases maybe even for a really good opinion. I agree with this. I think all of those things should be in every event, not just war events, but also like elections. And in elections, you would you'd also use your money to increase your uh, election effort, like your campaign effort, and you'd also uh, get favors from friends to, for them to help you, and you'd also bribe. Uh, other characters with your money to get them to help you like to get them to switch sides for example so yeah I think and these are gonna be the stances inside the events that's when I what I have in mind at least that you're gonna be able to do some special actions inside events to uh, influence them and not just by being in the event and adding effort throughout time and just waiting, which is something that uh, s someone complained about on Discord. I think it was the ninja guy who was complaining about, oh, the, are the events just, uh, just waiting? 
Uh, they're kind of... they're mostly waiting. After you join the event, you wait to see if you succeed or not, but there's also going to be some special abilities you can uh, attempt to try to increase your chances of winning that event. Alex says, how do you earn money in the game? Is it by holding titles like governor of a province, some other method? I think you should get a lot of money for being a governor, not directly, but uh, because the Romans didn't pay salaries for their positions. Like if you were a consul, or if you were a praetor, or if you were a censor, or wherever, whatever uh, office you held, you, your salary is zero, you get no money. That's how Rome was, they didn't pay salaries for these guys or any kind of money. They had to be independently wealthy. So the Roman political class generally was of landowners and they had their income through having land. So basically characters that are gonna be getting gold uh, throughout time depending on their uh, stewardship stat or maybe their family's wealth. There might be a stat for that. Uh, I also think it should be connected to the events from a more uh, gameplay perspective. I think that uh, the characters who join an event later or uh, characters who join an event that has a lot of characters in it already they should pay money to join the event and they should be paying the characters or the character that uh, created the event because uh, otherwise it's kind of easy to just join um, join the side with a lot of characters and win the event that way but if you have to pay if there's like an event that has five people in it on the, on the side, let's say there's uh, five people on the green side. The player could just join that side and win because there's so many people on that side. But if he has to pay like five gold, one for each person in the event, then yeah sure he wins the event but uh, he had to pay a lot of gold. So it's just a, a way to balance it, which I think money can can work that way. Um, so would you get an annual income? Yep. For the amount of lands you hold? Yep. Could you get more land? That would be interesting, I think. But it's, it might be a mess to simulate. I'm not sure if how good the AI is gonna be at holding land and buying land and stuff like that. Uh, we'll just have to see. Suffers says gets go see you next next week. Thanks for watching the stream man, and uh, for all the comments. Uh, see you next week. Thank you. Alex says, maybe getting more land would be the same as your stewardship stat increasing. Yeah, I guess. The AI can handle, it, handle that a lot better. Maybe it can, it can even change that, because I don't really like the name stewardship. Maybe I can just change that into... Land. <laughs> land. I don't know, maybe land... Uh, uh, land management makes no sense. I don't know. Just uh, oh, there's a, there's a term in Latin, the latifundia, right? I'm gonna write that in chat. Uh, that's just basically the big landed estates, and all politicians had had some or. Uh, or they they you borrowed money, but yeah, the stewardship stat could be just let it let it fund you instead. 
and it could be like a land icon because uh, the political class in Rome, the senators, were forbidden from doing business and trade, so they had to have land or borrow money. So that's that's where their their wealth came from. Uh, yeah, I think that's better than stewardship. I don't think. I was just taking it from. Uh, Crusader Kings, but I think I can do a unique stat and uh, replace uh, stewardship with uh, Latifundia, just land. But it's, it might be weird how you can increase your land, but it were, uh, like without spending money, that might be a bit strange. Uh, let's read a little about uh, Cicero's life. Now that uh, he was beginning to go in for politics more seriously, he came to the conclusion that it was a disgraceful thing that while a craftsman who uses inanimate tools and inanimate materials still knows what each of these is called, where it can be found and what, what it can do, the statesman who, who uses man as his instruments for public action should be slack and indifferent where knowledge of his fellow citizens is concerned. He therefore trained himself not only to memorize names but also to know in what part of the city every important person lived, where he, wa where he had his country houses, who were his friends and who his neighbors. And, those, and so, Whatever road in Italy Cicero happened to be traveling on, it was easy for him to name and point, point out the estates and villas of his friends. Um, Alex says that it makes a lot of sense, makes sense of why it pays you income which you can spend on events. I'm not sure I get that. His fortune was sufficient for his expenses, but was too small so that people were surprised and admired him when he took no fees or gifts for his services as an advocate. Particularly so at the time when he took on the case for the prosecution against Verus. Verus had been as praetor governor of Sicily and was prosecuted by the Sicilians for his numerous misdeeds. Cicero secured his conviction for Oops, sorry. Conviction not by the speech he made, but in a sense by the speech which he did not make. For the praetors in charge of the courts in Rome were doing what they could for Verus, and by various methods of, post of postponement had the case adjourned until the last possible day on which it could be heard. It therefore seemed obvious to them that since one day could, wouldn't be long enough for the speeches of the advocates, the trial could not possibly be, possibly be concluded. But Cicero stood up and said that there was no need of speeches. He merely called his witnesses and examined them and then asked the jury to cast their votes. There are still on record, however, a number of witty sayings of his in connection with this trial. For instance, when an ex-slave called Cecilius who was suspected of Jewish practices, wanted to push himself forward instead of the Sicilian witnesses and to make a speech against Verus himself, Cicero said, What has a Jew got to do with a pig? Verus being the Roman word for a castrated boar. What? And when Verus attacked Cicero and said that he was effeminate, Cicero replied, Surely this is the sort of language you ought to be using to your sons at home. Verus, having a grown-up son who had the reputation of being little better than a male prostitute. Oh. Then there was the remark he made to the orator Hortensius. Hortensius had not dared to speak of Ver for Verus at the trial proper, but when he came to the assessment of the fine he was induced to appear for him and received a reward a sphinx made of ivory. 
In the course of his speech, Cicero made some oblique reference to him, and Hortensius interjected, I am afraid I am not an expert at solving riddles. To which Cicero replied, Really? In spite of having the Sphinx in your house? Very witty. But anyway... Uh, I already uh, used up all my voice for today, so... If there are any last questions, you have a few seconds to let me know. And if there are not any questions, then uh, thanks for watching, and I'll be streaming again next week. Oops, oh, we will not actually be streaming next week, because there's uh, an event I'm going to be attending. So, uh, in a couple of weeks, I'll be back to streaming. So, yeah. Uh, thank you, and... Uh, have a good night. Bye-bye.